How do you know your purpose? Do you know your purpose? Hi, I'm Dr. Janine Kraft. I'm a psychologist turned mental wellness and consciousness coach, and I facilitate folks through transformation and creating a thriving mindset for life and their business. So purpose, let's get into it. Do you need to have a purpose in this life? Do you? Not really. Yet there's a lot of talk about getting it right, getting your purpose right, finding your purpose, and making sure you live to your potential, whatever that means. That all feels heavy AF to me. What I like to think about purpose is it's something that lights you up, that inspires you, that gets you excited to live in this life. Because let's be real. This earth existence in this human body is intense. And so it can be so great for us to focus our attention on something that really excites us, really just has us excited to get out of bed each day. And so then along with discovering this, it, there, there's kind of a journey to get there, which I get that most people don't teach and so this is where a lot of people get stuck in finding, well, you know, all of a sudden they wake up one day and they've been doing this maybe job forever, or, you know, they thought this was the road they were going to go down. And it's like, I can't keep doing this. A lot of folks have had this realization in the past couple of years. For me personally, I, I was always encouraged to do things that really got me excited. So for a long time, I was a ballet dancer and I felt like that was my purpose or I was very passionate about that. And then when I stopped, I realized, whoa, and that was like kind of taken away from me. Well, in the sense of like, I chose to stop, but it's like the identity was taken away from me. Was like, okay, well, what am I going to choose now? Because it's like, I can't live without something to put all this attention and energy and excitement towards. And so it took some trial and error, some trying some different things. I'm like, well, maybe I'll like hospitality, or maybe I'll be a fitness instructor, or maybe I'll be a psychologist, which I ended up following that path. However, in order to get the clarity on that, I had to go through some pretty intense healing work. And this is what folks don't talk about when they're speaking to purpose and finding your purpose. It's kind of like, well, just, you know, follow what's exciting for you and what inspires you and just try different things. And yes, and there can be a lot of blocks along the way. If we don't clear those, we won't be clear on what really lights us up. So what are those blocks? What do you have to be on the lookout for? We want to start at the basics, which is just first taking inventory or having an awareness of how are you functioning? How does your day-to-day -day look like? Do you know your human design or your Myers-Briggs or your horoscope or whatever? It's like, do you know these things about yourself and about how you naturally function? Now, not as a limitation by saying like this label and that is what it is, but more just do you have an awareness of who you are truly at the core, who you are and just how your energy naturally functions, right? So we always have to start there with awareness. Then we have to look at where is there unresolved trauma or trauma responses happening, where do the micro fight, flight, freeze, shutdown responses happen throughout the day? And why are they happening, right? What's contributing to them? Because if we are in a perpetual state of nervous system dysregulation, so our nervous system is kind of the electrical system, it's the orchestrator of the symphony that is the body. And if you are in trauma responses, that means your nervous system is dysregulated or overly active. So if our nervous system is in this state, we cannot access the creative centers of our brain. So it's like something that we thought was maybe like lit us up, was really exciting, maybe is actually incongruent with what our soul really desires. For example, if you grew up in a really 
chaotic household and it's normal for your nervous system to live in a fight or flight, you're going to seek things that match that. So you might seek jobs that are really adrenaline pumping. Maybe it's working in an ER or being in the military, right? Something to that effect because it's matching where the nervous system state is at. Now, when we start to heal, then those things are no longer in alignment, right? So it's like we have awareness. We got to look at our trauma trauma responses that are happening in the body. And so by that, we have to start to cultivate some regulation in the nervous system in order to feel safe, right? So not only to regulate ourselves, but to feel safe to explore other possibilities, to feel safe enough to create the potential of leaving that stable nine to five, right? So it's like all those things are wildly important. So it's not that you have been stuck trying to figure out your purpose. If you have not worked on these other things, then it will almost feel impossible for you to to move forward. So as you move through that and you start to kind of get aware of the trauma responses, the next thing in the healing process is getting clear on kind of your attachment styles or what are your boundaries? Do you still fawn, which is people pleasing? Are you the people pleaser that's just constantly bending to everyone else, right? In order for you to feel safe in a relationship, do you bend and give up what you like? Because if you are constantly doing that, then how do you even know what you want to do? If you are so agreeable to everyone else, then it's like you don't even know you. If you tell yourself something over and over again, you start to believe it. And so if you're the yes person and just bending to whatever everyone else wants, then it's quite likely that you don't even know what you're excited about, what would light you up. So that is all the really kind of foundational stuff that needs to happen before you could really even get in alignment or congruent with a purpose that's going to be really exciting for you. So then the kind of next level up of you've like healed those foundational things is to energetically start to get aware or fluent with the difference between your ego and your intuition. Because your intuition or your awareness is ripe with the information to guide you in the direction that you want to go, that your soul chose for you on this journey, right? Because if you're listening to things like, well, I don't, I don't know if that was ego or intuition, you got to get clear on that first, right? But if you are in a trauma response, there's no way you'll hear your intuition, right? That's why we got to start there because ego is going to be full of judgment. It's going to have a lot of charge to it. It's all the right, wrong, good, bad. Intuition is like a whisper. It's a knowing. And so this is why we have to soothe our nervous systems enough to be able to hear it. So we have kind of all that foundational work, then getting into more of, okay, well, we could start to explore our purpose when we start to set boundaries, when we say no, when we are regulated enough so we can hear our intuition and feel safe enough then to try other things, right? Because when you choose things and you take action on them, that gives you the information, Oftentimes we wait to get, you know, enough information before choosing and we actually get way more information after we've chosen because the action gives us the feedback. Again, though, we have to feel safe enough to take action that's outside of our comfort zone, right? Because it's going to naturally feel uncomfortable. It's outside of our comfort zone. But if we go into too much of a nervous system or trauma response, then we won't even be able to take that next step, right? So it's like we have to be able to be in this place where we can tolerate a certain amount of fear, excitement, sensation in the body in order to still choose, in order to still move forward. Now, something else to consider when you're looking at your purpose and cultivating this is What is your relationship with money? Because that is a huge key piece. I didn't leave my nine to five 
forever because of these collective money wounds and my own personal money wounds. Because to me, it was like the stability of that. And I just found myself not excited to get up every day, right? I was just like, well, I have to do this. I have to go through emotions. I mean, maybe it sounds familiar. And the day, the first week that I put in my notice, I was, it was like a huge weight, energetic weight had been lifted. And so I knew by that, that I was on the right track. But I could perceive that weightlifting because I've done a lot of years of healing and transformational work. So I perceived that, was, oh, yes. And I had to take action to get that information. I mean, my soul was telling me for years, leave your job, leave your job, right? It was telling me to do it, but I hmm, hmm, froze and stopped myself until I finally chose it. And everything changed. So going back to the money piece, then this is something we also have to look at because certainly a lot of people feel stuck in something they're doing because of the finances or they can't see how they could <clears throat> make money from their passion. Like some, you know, if it's a writing or a creative project or something like that, where they kind of get, you get blocked with, well, how do I make money on that? And so this is where, I mean, certainly doing research and seeing how other folks are making money from maybe something similar and healing our relationship with money in the sense of having a secure attachment style with money. And by that, I mean, allowing money to come and go like a good friend, trusting it will always be there when you need it and not holding on so tightly that you're like the stage five clinger and you repel it. If you're not feeling comfortable with that, then it will stop you. Again, it will paralyze you. It'll be another trauma response of stopping you before leaping. So to recap, awareness first of just kind of how you're functioning, looking at cultivating safety with nervous system regulation, trauma responses, right? Because these are all contributing to the overwhelm and the paralyzation you're feeling from moving forward. So trauma responses, setting boundaries so that you start to know what you like, right? You have to take action, choose you to get more information. And then gain to the place of where you can start to decipher what is your ego and your intuition, gaining some energetic fluency, I call it, basically being able to perceive and read the energy of your intuition. And then being able to get to this place of, you know, really feeling safe around money or doing something. Does that mean like saving a certain amount so you feel comfortable to take that leap? Because ultimately it is a leap. It's like leaping out of a plane and building the parachute on the way down. Because there are no guarantees. And that's the thing is we have this idea that, well, the nine to five is stable and it's not because you're not the source. When you work for yourself, you are the source, which means you can create everything you want. When you work for a nine to five, we say, well, it's like, we kind of like, I just rely on that paycheck every other week or whatever. And it's like, well, what if, what if something happens? The job, you know, like we saw with, you know, 2020 and beyond people being let go and businesses shutting down. It's like, then you can't rely on that, but you can always rely on you and you'll feel safer to rely on you after you've done a lot of this foundational work. So if you're wanting more on this, I'd love to have you join my Choosing You community. So this is a community and really intensive kind of DIY course courses to take you through this exact process that I was talking about, along with hypnoses to help rewire worksheets and tons of information, guided breath works, tappings to all get you through this healing process, right? So being able to cultivate this transformation so that you can get clear, get clear on your purpose, get clear on what excites you. And so if you're wanting to join us, I'd love to have you in.